All right guys, the last time that we saw our friend Roskiro, he was kind of realizing that every time that we make a choice, consequences come from that. So for example, when he nibbled on Gregory the Jailer's rope, Gregory the Jailer lit a match in his face and Roskiro saw the light for the first time and he fell in love with it. He fell in love with it so much that he made the choice to go upstairs and find more of it. Now, when he went upstairs, the consequence of this choice and this action was he went on the chandelier, he fell off the chandelier, landed in the queen's bowl of soup, and the queen died, which made the king outlaw soup, bowls, kettles, spoons, and rats. So by Roskiro making that choice to go upstairs, all rats are now outlawed, which means they're illegal. And then we learned at the same time Despero was upstairs also making a choice. Remember, he heard the sweet music and he decided to follow where the music was leading to. And it led him to the king playing music for his daughter. And that's how Despero got to meet the princess. But because of his choice, he was sentenced to life in the dungeon where the rats live. Because we know that the king did not like rodents because of what happened to his wife. So it's all starting to make sense now. The story's coming together. And when he last left off, it said we were going to be meeting a new character named Miggery So. And that Miggery So, although she did not know it yet, would be an instrumental person in helping the rat work his revenge. Which means this new character, Miggery So, is going to help Roskiro get his revenge on the Princess P. So our new book is called Book the Third, Gore, the Tale of Miggery So. Now, gore is not a real word, it's a silly word. It's what we would say like, gosh, or goodness, or oh my. So whenever Meg says gore, just replace it with one of those words to help it make sense in your head. So let's see how Miggery So gets involved with Roskiro, the princess, and Despero. Chapter 24. A handful of candy, a red tablecloth, and a hen. I've heard that list of things somewhere before. Where have I heard it? Hmm. Again, reader, we must go backward before we can go forward. With that said, here begins a short history of the life and times of Miggery So, a girl born into this world many years before the mouse Despero and the rat Chiroscuro, a girl born far from the castle and named for her father's favorite prize-winning pig. Do you want to be named after a pig? I don't. Miggery So was six years old when her mother, holding onto Mig's hand and staring directly into Mig's eyes, died. Ma, said Mig, Ma, can't you stay here with me? Oh, said her mother, who is that? Who is that holding my hand? It's me, Ma, it's Miggery So. Ah, child, let me go. But I want you to stay here, said Mig, wiping first at her runny nose and then at her eyes. You want, said her mother. Yes, I want, said Mig. Ah, child, what does it matter what you want, said her mother. She squeezed Mig's hands once, twice, and then she died, leaving Mig alone with her father, who on a market day in spring, soon after his wife's death, sold his daughter into service for a handful of candy, a red tablecloth, and a hen. Oh my goodness, Mig's father is the prisoner in the dungeon that Roscuro was torturing. That's where Roscuro got his red cape from. It's all coming full circle. Go on, he said, you belong to that man now. But I don't want to, Papa, she said. I want to go with you. She took hold of the red tablecloth and tugged on it. Goodness, child, her father said. Who's asking you what you want? Go on. He entangled her fingers from the cloth and turned her in the direction of the man who had just bought her. Mig watched her father walk away, the red tablecloth billowing out behind him. He left his daughter and reader, as you already know, he did not look back. Not even once. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine your father selling you for a tablecloth, a hen, and a handful of candy? Close your eyes, please, and consider it just for a moment. Done? I hope that the hair on the back of your neck stood up as you thought of Mig's fate and how it would be if it were your own. Poor Mig, what will become of her? You must, frightened though you may be, read on and see for yourself. Reader, it's your duty. Chapter 25, A Vicious Circle. Miggery So called the man who purchased her uncle as he told her she must. Also, he said she must, Mig tended uncle's sheep, cooked uncle's food, and scrubbed uncle's kettle. She did all of this without a word of thanks or praise from the man himself. 
Another unfortunate fact of life with Uncle was that he very much liked giving Mig what he referred to as a good clout to the ear. Okay, remember when we first met Migariso, it said that her ears were like cauliflowers? I wonder what a good clout to the ear is if it's something that makes her ear look like cauliflowers. Hmm. In fairness to Uncle, it must be reported that he always did inquire whether or not Mig was interested in receiving the clout. Their daily exchanges went something like this. Uncle, I thought I told you to clean the kettle. Mig, I cleaned it, Uncle. I cleaned it good. Uncle, ah, it's filthy. You'll have to be punished, won't ya? Mig, gore, Uncle. I cleaned the kettle. Uncle, are you saying that I'm a liar, girl? Mig, no, Uncle. Uncle, do you want a good clout to the ear then? Mig, no, thank you, Uncle. I don't. Alas, Uncle seemed to be as entirely unconcerned with what Mig wanted as her mother and father had been. The disgust clout to the ear was always delivered, delivered, I'm afraid, with a great deal of enthusiasm on Uncle's part, and received with absolutely no enthusiasm at all on the part of Mig. Have you figured out what a clout to the ear is yet? He, he hits her in the ear when she doesn't do what he wants. It's not good. These clouts were alarmingly frequent, and Uncle was scrupulously fair in paying attention to both the right and left side of Migri's, of Migri's so. So it was after a time that young Mig's ears came to resemble not so much ears as pieces of cauliflower stuck to either side of her head, and they became about as useful to her as pieces of cauliflower. That is to say that they all but ceased functioning as ears. Words for Mig lost their sharp edges, and then they lost their edges altogether and became blurry, blankety things that she had a great deal of trouble making sense of, at, at, making any sense of at all. The less Mig heard, the less she understood. The less she understood, the more things she did wrong. And the more things she did wrong, the more clouts to the ear she received and the less she heard. This is what is known as a vicious circle, and Miggery So was right in the center of it, which is not reader where anyone would want to be. But then, as you know, hello, Blackie. But then, as you know, what Miggery So had wanted had never been much of a concern to anyone. The end of this chapter.